it's finally spring. And even though we still have some snow on the ground, my thoughts are with flowers blooming. So at this time of year, baking becomes a lot lighter, fluffier, not as heavy as in the winter when we do a lot of things with yeast and breads. I'm going to do mousse cakes. We're going to start off with a strawberry mousse cake. Typically, I make this every Easter, but it's great for a shower, a wedding, whatever. It's just a great cake. Um, let's talk about spring form pans for just a moment. They, they come in all different sizes and now all different shapes. We've got a, an 8 inch, a 10 inch, a 12 inch. Um, we've even got a square one and now they come in oblongs. These come in all kinds of shapes and sizes and feel free to, you know, use the kind that you would like. I make the strawberry mousse cake and my lemon mousse cake in this one all the time. But today I'm going to be traditional and I'm going to use a traditional nine inch round spring form pan. And I'm going to start off by making a genoise cake. It's a sponge cake. And this is typical of those light fluffy cakes. And then we're going to fill it with a strawberry mousse, which is going to be delicious. What I did with the spring form pan is I took a piece of wax paper and cut it to fit the bottom. And then I greased and floured the pan and shook it all out, and now I can put this aside and we can get going with the, with the mixture for the mousse cake. My stove, on my stove behind me, I have a pot with a little bit of water in it. We're going to make a, a water bath. And in to start off, we're going to go with two thirds of a cup of sugar and four whole eggs. And we're gonna heat these up on the stove over that water until the sugar dissolves and the mixture is nice and warm. Then we can put it on our mixer and we can get it nice and fluffy and get it to be a big volume and nice and light. And then we'll add some flour, two thirds of a cup of flour, half a teaspoon of salt, teaspoon of pure vanilla extract, and four tablespoons of butter, which I will melt and cool, but I'll, I'll wait until this part of it is done. This is gonna take probably Oh, four or five minutes over the warm water to have the sugar dissolve and everything be nice and warm before we can put it on the mixer. So that's what I'm going to do and I'll come back when it's nice and warm. Here's our egg and sugar mixture all nice and warm and I'm going to put it on my mixer and we're going to have to, I'm going to use the whip attachment because that's going to help give this volume and that's what we want because it's going to make the cake nice and light. Um, this is going to take probably four or five minutes, uh, depending upon your mixer. If you've got a hand mixer and you're doing that, it might take just slightly longer. So when it comes back, we'll come back when it's about triple volume, and I will add the other ingredients. But now I'm going to make some noise. lighter in color and it's tripled in volume and it's just light and full of air. So we're going to take that off and then we're going to use a sifter and I'm going to put the salt in with the flour. That's just like a half a teaspoon of salt and the two-thirds cup of flour. Put that in there. This is just to ensure that there's no foreign objects in there. Just make sure it's nice and fine. Now we're going to use a folding action with my spatula. So basically it's down the center, up and over. We don't add the um, vanilla or the butter now. We wait until the flour is all incorporated. This is the most critical part of making the cake, is getting all this flour well incorporated without deflating the genoise batter. And sometimes you'll say, oh, it looks like it's all incorporated. Just take a couple extra scoops down to the bottom and bring it up and you'll see there's some dry particles. And make sure you get all of this incorporated. You can see I'm moving the bowl, keeping my arm, just going in that motion. Scraping down the sides. Let's take a look. 
would say that's about pretty well done. So now what I'm going to do is add my teaspoon of vanilla into my butter that's melted and cooled. It's not cold, it's it's warm, but it's it's cooler than when it came out of the oven. I just zapped it in the microwave for a couple of seconds. You add all of that, and again, the same kind of folding action. You will see a little bit of deflating of the batter at this point when you add the butter because the butter is so much heavier than the batter. But you can't do anything about that. And again, you want to go and go and go until you don't see any streaks of butter. I still see quite a few streaks. And my oven is on behind me at 350 degrees. Once I put it into the pan, it will go into that 350 degree oven for 15 to 20 minutes, maybe as much as 22 minutes. You just have to kind of watch it. Put your finger in the center. It'll be lightly browned on top and just see if it gets a little bit of a spring to it. It'll come away slightly from the sides. And then we have to cool our cake. Okay, I think we have I think we have a batter. So pour it into our pan. You know, there's so much air whipped into this, you can actually feel it's lighter. So I'm putting it in there. Okay. And I'm going to give it a little tap to release the air bubbles. And now into the oven again for, I'll start checking it at 18 minutes, but I'm guessing it's going to take more like 24, 25. But let's find out. So here's our Genoise cake out of the oven. You can see it's nice and lightly browned, springs back a little bit, and it slightly separates from the side of the pan. What we need to do now is let this sit on a rack for five minutes. Then we will take it out of the pan and let it cool completely, and then we can proceed. But in the meantime, set my timer for the five minutes. What you need to do to get prepared for the filling is you need to buy a 10 ounce uh, package of frozen strawberries in their syrup. comes in a plastic tub like this. And what you need to do is pour it out into a sieve over a bowl and you want to separate the strawberries from the liquid and you want to keep both. Both of them are going to go into the mousse cake in different ways. So after the cake is completely cooled, I'll come back, show you how to make the strawberry mousse and we'll start putting the cake together. But it's not done today. It needs an overnight. Be back in a while. Well, the cake is cooling, and now we're going to work on the filling, the strawberry mousse. Now, remember those strawberries that I drained? I put them in a sieve, and I separated the strawberries from the liquid. I put the strawberries in my food processor, and I put the liquid in a small saucepan, and I added either one envelope of gelatin, or if you don't use envelopes and you use it with a scoop measure, it would be one tablespoon. And I just put this on low heat for like two or three minutes, gave it a little whisk just so the gelatin dissolved into the liquid. Now I'm going to add it back to the strawberries. This is what's going to make our mousse set up. Okay. And now I'm going to just press it a little bit. I don't want this to be too much of a puree. I want a little bit of chunk left in there. So we're done with that for the moment. Now let's talk about the pan. Here's the pan that we baked the mousse cake in. I cleaned it out, and now we're going to use this as our mold for the cake. What I did was I took a piece of aluminum foil, and I cut it so that it would fit around the pan, and then I folded it in half for a little bit more stability. And now we're going to put it inside the pan. But don't worry, when you put the first layer of the cake in here, it's going to hold it in place. And I'm just going to use a paper clip for now just to hold this together. And now we've got to get our cake. Here's our mousse cake all nice and cooled. Come 
come, baby. Now, what I'm going to do is cut this in half, and hopefully I'll get it nice and even. But you know what? If you don't get it that even, it really doesn't matter because the mousse is going to <clears throat> cover up a lot of mistakes. I think Julia Child used to say, the great thing about whipped cream is it hit a lot of sins. A long serrated knife, or at least a serrated knife, is the best for this kind of work. It just cuts the memoirs so much nicer. There we go, that's not bad. I am going to use the top part for the bottom because what I want is this nice flat top for the top of the cake when we're all done. That we're gonna put over there. That goes in last. Okay, now I have some strawberries. I was lucky enough to find some huge strawberries today and I cut off the chops. I gave them a nice little flat bottom and what you're going to do is now put these in the perimeter of the pan, this the cut side out. Now, if you can't find gigantic strawberries like this, you can use smaller ones, that's okay. You just Your mousse just won't be, you know, quite as high. And just do this real quick. And then when I'm done with this, I'm gonna set it aside and I'm going to go get my heavy cream. For this recipe, we are going to use heavy cream, not light cream, not any, listen, it's a dessert. Let's go for the full fat stuff. So we're gonna go for heavy cream. We're gonna use a little generous three quarters of a cup. And we're gonna whip it up and we're gonna add it to this strawberry mixture. And this will make our mousse. Now, if you wanted to, you could make um, a little bit of a rum syrup. You could take some regular rum and dilute it with water a little bit and brush the layers of the cake. I don't think it's necessary. I think this cake stands all by itself. So I'm going to put this aside and put my cake aside. And I'm going to go get my heavy cream and I'll come right back and I'll show you how to make the rest of the mousse. I have a heavy cream. And it's a generous three quarters of a cup. If you want to put up into as much as a cup, that's fine. It won't hurt this at all. And now we're going to put this on our mixer and we need to whip this until it is not stiff peaks, but soft peaks. You still want, you want some body to it, but you don't want it to be really stiff. And then we're going to fold in the strawberry. So while it's mixing, I'm going to be quiet because this is very loud. not very stiff. They hold a little bit, but they're not standing up like a soldier. Okay, so now get our strawberry mixture and we pour that in. Love the smell of strawberries. I do so much of spring. It's so fresh. And we just do our little folding action again. Down to the middle, up and over. Turn the bowl. Keep your arm moving. If you had, if you wanted to, you could double this recipe before you did this, or triple it if you wanted to. Use as much as you want to in the mousse cake and put the rest of it into small little cups. It is a delicious pudding all by itself. And you could actually chop in some extra strawberries into those pudding cups. And you can actually do it in here too. You could put some more strawberries on the bottom of that cake. Okay, there we go. Here's our... Don't worry, you'll get to see it the unveiling so you'll see what it looks like. But unfortunately, we have to put this in the refrigerator overnight. It's, the gelatin has to have a chance to set up and so that we can let the cake stand all by itself. Push it over to the sides just so that it holds up all those strawberries. And the last part, 
back to our other half of the cake and we're going to put this on top. And don't worry, this is going to get really nicely decorated. So it's not going to have just a plain top. So what I'm going to do now, I can take this off, is I'm going to put a piece of, piece of plastic wrap over it and put it in the refrigerator overnight and then we'll come back tomorrow and I will show you how to finish the mousse cake. Our strawberry mousse cake is out of the refrigerator. It's been there overnight. I had it covered in plastic to keep it from drying out. And here we go. I'm going to undo the mold. Now take off the collar. And now it's a little lopsided, but that's okay. We'll cover it up with cream. So I have here some red currant jelly, which is clear, has no seeds in it. And it's very good for something like this because it really doesn't have a lot of flavor. So I'm going to brush the top of the cake with the red currant jelly. And I also have a bowl here of strawberries, which are sliced, that I'm now going to use to decorate. And I'm going to make circles all around the cake, trying to find strawberries that are about the same. And this just takes a little bit of time and patience. And off to the side, I've also saved one nice big strawberry for the center. And we're also going to brush these strawberries with that same red currant jelly because it'll do two things. It will give the strawberries a nice shine, but more importantly, it will keep them from drying out. Okay, a couple more in the center. Okay, now a little brush of the red currant jelly. Now, I have some whipped cream. Everything is better with whipped cream. And some smaller strawberries. And I think we'll do big globs. One really big glob in the center. Kind of fan out our strawberry. Put some small ones on there. Again, with the red currant. And there you have a spectacular springtime dessert or for Easter, for a shower, for whatever. It's delicious.